car yet? No. That's what you for. I'm just saying. Disaster on the plane. Awesome disaster. Disaster? Could have got off faster. We don't. The jet. The jet was taking its time. <laughs> you know, they said, rush up. There was a like man dying with him right behind they you. They were freaking out. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Okay. Kind of tired? Yeah. How tired? We like a good week break, um, which is actually the longest break we've had the entire year. So uh, yeah, it was actually really nice having a break. Um, we could have taken probably even longer, but we wanted to get back into it pretty quickly since we didn't play plans or anything. Uh, we didn't want to fall behind too far. Um, so yeah, it was nice having a break. The travel, travel this time was pretty smooth actually. Um, we had Brad on Ter Dongman and Pelican leave the exact same time that the rest of us went to Hawaii and then eventually Brad on Ter Mendes in Hawaii and then Dongman stayed back in California playing at the FA's headquarters. But um, it went pretty smooth. We uh, got really good seats on the first way there and we just got there. We, I don't remember what time we got there, but the hotels were really nice and we all just slept really well. And then the next day was content. And then we had a couple days of scrims and we were ready. The first match, I don't think we had any too much thought into it. Um, I honestly feel like we knew we were the better team going into it. Um, I think we actually thought we could 3 of them. Uh, we probably should have if we just didn't mess up some stuff. Um, but going into that match, I don't think we were too stressed out or anything. Uh, we think we knew if we played well, we'd do well. So important with this Nano, and there it is on the Jinmu. Over the top it goes, like you said, Nano boost for the Farah, and that's two for Jinmu. And that's an EMP combination as well. EMP Nano Barrage, that is filthy. And that'll not do the job. Much, not much you can do to live through that. And look, like I talked about, that was the only beat you got in that whole uh, the whole half right there. So inside the mech, he goes for a self destruct and a reset. He'll get back in as well. Iris has lost an immortality field. This has to be a big stick and he gets far away. Can more be done than that for Pelican? It might have to be. Air Matrix is in play, but the Atlanta rank can't oh, benefit oh. from its positioning and the oh, Hunters yeah. get the job done. The Atlanta rank are plucky oh. to be sure. But once again, the Hunters send them packing. Oh man, what a bounce back there from Chengdu. The Chengdu series was a little unfortunate. We honestly probably should have three of them, but um, we shit the bed on Anubis. Uh, we actually usually don't even, like we try to win Anubis, but like we're like, okay, whatever, it's Anubis. We'll just try to, we'll try our best. And like, we don't, we, we, we were really bad at that map. So we kind of just um, winged it, but we actually should have won that series, that, that map. Because, and it's unfortunate we um, C9, two ticks, and then we eventually didn't touch the point. 
um, when they're trying to cap the MP belts and back capped. We really choked. We also choked Dorado. So we we just like we just didn't play that well that series, and it showed because we lost Map Five. I think after that loss, um, I remember some of the guys saying like that was just like awful loss. Like it wasn't like they beat us down or anything. Like we knew we should have won, and honestly, it was us throwing, not them playing well. In my opinion, um, it's easy to say, but I really don't think they did anything special. I think we just kind of played bad. Um, so we just kind of knew if we played well. After that, then we could easily run the bracket, um, which I guess is exactly what happened. Excuse me, brother, but I'm trying to get three now. <sighs> Jesus, man, you're going to kill me with this <laughs> shit one day. I swear you get heavier every time. <laughs> it's supposed to get easier to get stronger at He just has to stay alive and hope he gets value over time. And now look at the pressure. Teleport straight to the point. They're going to have to start playing this, but baby left behind. Taken out. The blizzard was dropped, and they did manage to avoid it for the moment, but they've already lost one of their players, a crucial element to this fight. With Assassin gone, it's not looking likely. Mag drops down the Earth Shadow, but only Gator will be connected onto. And with the overtime now just dwindling down, that is a dominant. Particularly because of his fault, but the fight was already over by the time he got used. Blizzard in hand, the Earth Shadow, what a connection! So many players down and out, stand up, it locks them up with the Blizzard as well, the old one-two combo. Oh, we're just witnessing magic, and an angry and hungry Atlanta Rain. Atlanta Rain just marking them, rotating around, it's gonna get into the overtime, Fury dropping down, that South Destruct Gator with the Earth Shadow, Mag returns one of his own, two players down, but is it gonna be enough? The Blizzard from Pelican, Everybody's frozen up onto the point, but there needs to be a bit more, and it does not look likely. The Justice just unable to pull out really anything here. Desperation from closer as the sound barrier is committed, but for the Atlanta oh, Rain, oh, it's an even better one. Sorry, and that is going to be that. Get out of here, Everything different. Uh, we actually scrimmed them a lot during the two weeks, two, three weeks leading up to the tournament and they they actually a couple times they actually did completely dominate us in the rush mirror so um we didn't know if they played like that in the match but they ended up playing really really passive in the match and we also played a lot more aggressive uh, because it was like a, it wasn't a scrim environment it was a match environment so we just knew what we can abuse we played them a lot and um ended up being a pretty easy game because we're just better at that comp than them even though they practiced it pretty much only for like the last three weeks I think GLADS is the most important match because I actually do think, um, I actually think they're, personally, I think they're a better team than Shock and Fuel, which are after. Um, GLADS got knocked down by Shanghai. They got like dominated by Shanghai, but I think Shanghai was just the best team there. Um, so um, I think we knew that GLADS match was going to be a hard one. Respectfully taking this. Why am, I being, why am I being recorded right now? I think we all are. Yeah, that big ass camera there. Oh. Uh, that is actually taking a piss right now. The camera. If we lose a map, just get your water ball and chuck it at it. Get the fucking camera off me. <laughs> Oh, it's got good move actually. It did push Muse away when he tried to go for the power drive. Birdering in a lot of trouble. It's taken out. A lot of pressure. And look at that fire strike from afar. Kemps is taken out. Skewed on top of it. They're already on the point. The teleporter straight onto it. They might just get two ticks for free here. We're ready to shatter. That's going to be the connection. That's a great one. Nanabu's committed onto space, but it's already just mitigated completely. Southers are going to be blocked up on top of it, and it's just individualism across the board. The Atlanta Rain coming out with a lot of fire. That looks like a rapid capture. The Gladiators are going to be stalling this. He's on the ball, dodges that one, but not for the back line there. That's going to be a swift kill onto Bird Ring. Still coming in from the side, but what can Kevster really do? Even with the Nanabus deployed, he gets dealt with easily. That's the Atlanta Rain. Pelican has only just respawned, by the way, and Gator holding onto this Earth Shatter. Wants to break the shield right around the corner, wants to let it rip, but just swinging anyway. Now the Sound Barrier, now the Earth Shatter. Everything overlapped, and they're being pushed away. Not even EMP right at the end. It didn't even Let's matter. Fucking go. Let's, Let's go. fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Oh my god. Let's go. Let's go. We're good. That's good. One more map, one more map. Straight in, heals for the team. That's going to be the Earthshot. It does connect, perfectly timed. Shu is on the floor, but there's no kills going their way. With the Rally Armor, Scoot's still alive. He's supplementing the rest of his team. And now the Mines, they've been crushed. 
The Atlanta Rain, they stuck to their guns, they stayed on the composition, but it has not worked out. The Gladiators, they knew exactly what they were doing when they took them to Dorado. Making sure that he doesn't get jumped on. Just off onto the side, has the Pulse Bomb, and that is going to be a stick. It forces out the Immortality Field, but they combo it up anyway. Power Driver right into the damage, space at the off angle, it's all coming together. Damage in, Iris is so low, he had to commit that ult. Or oh, sorry, I should say the Immortality Field just to keep him alive. Now they coordinate into the backline, Shu pushed against the wall. Finally, the Atlanta Reign, they found an answer to it, but it's not over yet. Still the Gladiators with three players remaining, but eventually they are going to be going down. But T-triggered. Shoes down! Space Demek, this could be it! The Gladiators! They've come so far for this, they're going to need something massive! The Pulse Bomb, it's denied! The Immortality Field is there! And the Atlanta Rain, also healthy, even with this EMP. Is it even going to be enough? Birdering Solo has to get out of the fight, and now it is danger. Kai just shooting down every single target that tries to keep this one burning. And it is not enough. The Atlanta Rain will be moving forwards in the lower bracket, and they have sent the Gladiators home. What an incredible performance from Atlanta in the 2021 playoffs. They have secured their position in the top four. Immediately after the match, was, we were all definitely excited. That was a team that we really wanted to beat. Glads this year, like always felt like they're like a top, top, top team. And they had a really good roster. So um, I think I felt like they were like, that was like the team we wanted to beat there. Like it really felt like, it really weirdly felt like they're like always in our way and we are always in their way, which that kind of feels like a rival situation. So it felt really good beating them, um, especially since they kind of like, they're like a bit of a regime team where they, they, they do long hours, long reviews, that kind of stuff. So it felt good, like almost like just shutting their, all their hard work down for almost nothing, you know? So we were really happy about it, but then we were like, wait, 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 like shocks next, like, well, now we have to we have to end that too. Can't just let them get by us, right? Um, so I'd say honestly, if there was two teams there that we wanted to end their season, it would be Shock and Glads. And we even joked like as a team, like we weren't even we were there. We're not necessarily we weren't there to like win, but we were to make there to make everyone else lose. <laughs> Oh, getting pressure. Wait. Already the supports aren't there. Yeah, the Shocker playing this so quickly. Intelligent from them, knowing that the support line was actually just going to be ferrying them back, and now it's overtime. The Atlanta Rain. How did they get in that quick? They might have just lost the one team fight they needed to win. I cannot believe they made that call, but they're just going to dump the ultimates in anyway. It's a last chance for them, but not enough. And there's a better ultimate coming through for them. They're going to be able to contest this with Nero going down. It doesn't look likely. It's going to be traded. Pelican falling. Still, anyone could turn this. Violet a big ultimate for it, but with Violet going down, now Super with the Earth Shadow, he has to find something massive, and it's not going to be the case. Hawk, the Gravitic Flux is perfect. It shuts them out, and they are going to be able to get this final capture and take away the map. I am fucking dominating these kids. Holy shit. I'm 50 and 4 right now. 50 and 4. Jesus. Actually? Yeah, look at this. Nice. Okay, quick game. Kai will be looking for an early kickoff if he can get it on the Widowmaker. I can't remember the last time I saw a player actually get Oh no! Oh no! Oh, 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 okay! Wow! Last time I saw a Widowmaker get a pick. Now I, oh, I do. I'm definitely going to remember that one. Oh. They are set up to succeed. The shock. They're going to try and contest this one. It's all over. If you lose Violet that early, it, I mean, done. it's done. It is done. It's done. Not only did they lose Violet, but Gator caught Glisto with an additional piece of spam. His fire strike got finished off and got the kill. And so it's an early pick in both of those team fights. Drop down around the corner, that's Gator. We got one player down, and that's the Blizzard aid up as well. With it, this could just be the Shock's hopes and dreams. They're trying to finish with a bit of time. The Shadow Super frozen. Not going to be getting anything from it. The Atlanta Rain. Well, that's everything dropped down. And it's almost everything denied for the San Francisco Shock. There will not be a three-peat today. A few seconds standing between the Atlanta Rain and getting the win. Well, they upset them back in 2019, but this was anything but that. This is an Atlanta Rain that is here to play. And our two-time champions are going home. We did lose Nepal to Shock. That was probably half my bat on that one. So, um, yeah. We weren't really too stressed about losing Koths. Um, 
we actually used to be always really bad at coths. So we would, if we'd lost coth, we'd be like, oh, we'll win the next maps, whatever. But we've actually gotten really good at coths in general. So um, yeah, I don't think we've really worried about it too much. Like if we just lose it, we just go next map. Like I remember um, after the shock one, we were like, we'll just win the next three maps. We, we knew that since they won that map in the mirror, that they'd be confident in taking the mirror. So it's actually like a good sense of false confidence. Like we didn't, we didn't think we played good and lost that map. We felt we played really bad and lost. So it was like actually, honestly, almost a good sign. It wasn't necessarily even that bad. People already didn't want us to win to begin with because they're like one of the, like the most fit like follow team along with like Dallas was also the most follow team. So like, um, you know, like kind of hype each other, ourselves up or like kind of want like, people already hate us. People just don't really like us in general because <laughs> we kind of just like, we, take, we like to bait some people. Like uh, the, the community gets baited pretty easily by our antics. But um, uh, like I said earlier, it's all just fun and games and we don't take ourselves too seriously, but it's funny when other people take it seriously. Like you'll see like, you'll see like fan pages or like Reddit accounts, like literally like complaining more than we do like 30 times a day. And just like, it, it's a little, it gives us a little chuckle, you know, it's like, you know, well, you just got baited by us. So, uh, so yeah, you know, just, it's all fun games. Being like a villain, like the villainous team, um, like, is cool. Like, I think like, People always love to like jump at the opportunity to like chirp about our team and stuff, and 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 it's it's never like our fans. It's always like the it's like the Dallas fans and the Shock fans and the Glads fans, like you know. So um, I think it's funny, and I think we always en we always enjoy being like a like a dark horse or like a villain team or like an underrated team. So. Um, we always like that, so it's always a good time. Uh, of course, a really interesting way to sort of ring in a, a very momentous match here, of course. The Dallas Fuel go up against the Atlanta Rain. Two teams that have traded no shortage of blows, obviously, in the Western region throughout the course of this year. And now it all comes down to this. Only one team can advance to take on the drag. The Rain are going to TP point. Yeah, the old fashioned way. Keep it simple. Remember, I only need 44.5%, excuse me. Harbin's gonna be desuited already in amplification matrix here from the Dallas Fuel, but that sim wall just shuts it all down. This is looking pretty primo from the Atlanta Rain now, man. Yep. All right, Kelly. He's hunting. Well, Sparkle just had to walk straight into the enemy there. Hawk with an... Yep. He, he got so... He got the, the big blizzard onto Nero, right, that he ate at the end of the shot game. This one with a big dragon now. And Sparkle's back on the Doom. Oh no, and it's Doha back on the Doom. And Sparkle, he has this Sim Wall. You're gonna have one from Kai as well. Two Sim Walls on the point. This is about to get extremely dicey. Teleport in the back for Sparkle. Turns his head as just a bait. They get one, the tick, one tick is all that the Rain need on the point. The Fuel had to push up quickly. It's an Immortality Field now, but feels that's run out. Sparkle's gonna get hit by the Shadow, but there's a South Barrier play and Pelican's Blizzard has eaten up. That could be devastating. Felix is brought down finally though, and it's Sparkle to drop the Immortality Field prolongs Gator's life. But here comes the Doom once more. Gator knocked up. Doha takes him down from the sky, but it's not enough. A minute remains. Dallas must finish the map. EMP catches Jexa. Felix also. Here comes a bomb thrown in. No one's affected by that. And Fuel is going to be kept alive somehow. It's a transcendence now from Iris thrown in. But Master! He gets hit with the pulse bomb there, and Pelican doesn't look like he's in a safe spot to intervene. Iris and Master are both down now, and the Fuel have gotten the supports out of the equation. Now to deal with Gator, and they'll have a crack at finishing this map. Nick Doha has oh, to he get out get though. Hack on Hanbin. Doha has an EMP. In we go. It catches on to five people. That might be just the ticket, but Dallas has split the retention. There's no one target. They're focusing down. They get rid of Virus, and that is crucial. They kill Fielder. He's gone. That's the lion's share of the healing for the Dallas Field. Now out of the equation is a minefield on the card, and Doha can't get close. He's going to be run down. He can't escape. Sparkle's there with a pulse bomb, but it doesn't look like there's a connection to Pelican. He flicks the lights out. Gator takes down Doha, and it's Jexa running into the minefield. The Dallas Field are brought to their knees in these final moments. Fielder trying to stay alive. It's a boot kill. Spark was there to fight one of his own as well, but there's nobody left. It's going to be Fielder again. Trying to slurp on the card as Fielder steps up. 
but he's hacked on the way there. A pulse bomb will end his life. And it's just Doha all on his own to try and keep the dream alive with the Atlanta Reign. They're going to do this. Doha falls. And the kings have been slain. A new king reigns in the West. Atlanta with a run back losers. They lose the champion. And they make the run all the way where they will play against the Shanghai Dragons. Wow. Dive team. Leo dive team. No plan. Don't, don't be the car. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, Bally. I see you tomorrow. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we beat Dallas Fuel. Honestly, it was really easy. It was really easy. I'm actually quite surprised. We even beat them on the dive as well. Like, come on. Come on. Me and Tracer. <laughs> Pretty fucking easy. <laughs> uh, Dorado. I, I remember I'm like, okay, well... We, we were going to play our uh, three fights on Dorado, but it just completely failed the two other matches before that. And we ended up capping. We usually don't cap. Uh, we usually get stuck on third point at that end. That was actually the first time we just fully swapped like the Zem uh, We usually play Mercy, Anna, but we swapped to Zembrig, Sombra. And actually, it ended up being pretty good. They C9 a little bit, but it was kind of like a 4 C9, so I like, can't really tell if they're going to throw the fight to test the point or not. But um, yeah, we, we capped the map and then we end up starting, we kind of shit the bed on the first defense, pun Zembering, but we got some momentum in second point. And then third point, there was this one fight where they pushed us to EMP and they walked past me and I just killed like their Brig and their Anna, and got their Anna 1 HP so someone else could kill her. And that's when I knew like, wow, this is like, we could really like, this is like shifting to our momentum because they just use a shit ton of volts. They're stuck on Monkey, which Monkey's like good, but it's not the best here. Like Ball is like just significantly better. And um, our spawn's right there. So like they have to run a mile away and our spawn's right there. And I remember saying like, is that it? Is that it? And like Asama kept touching. I'm like, okay, let's just kill her and let's fucking celebrate. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was that was fun. After they went in the last map of Fuel, um, we were actually really happy because that obviously means we made finals. And making finals is actually like a really impressive feat. Um, Obviously, winning is even better, but um, making finals is really nuts. Um, if it was live events, it would have been a huge crowd, right? It would have been thousands of people. So, um, making finals is really sick. Uh, we were really happy about that. And that also gave us a chance to try to beat Shanghai again. Hey guys, it's Strider. And Tech. We're at Battle and Brew in Atlanta, Georgia for a watch party. We got giveaways. We got food. We down here. Come on in. Come on in. All the people coming out for the event stuff was really sick. I saw tons of photos and stuff and people were applying. And all the support was actually really awesome. Um, I think Atlanta actually has like probably like the best fan base. Like they actually, they're like, they really are. They're just like not like fair weather fans and stuff, you know, like they, they really do stick with like the teams through thick and thin. So, um, it was actually really cool to try to to get that far for the fans and then obviously to try to win it in finals for them. So that was actually awesome. 227 matches into our fourth season. It now falls to us to crown our 2021 Overwatch League champion. These two teams, namesakes as mythical as their path through this grueling season, now face one more time to find out who will be taking the trophy. It doesn't cover the whole point there. His fate didn't have enough time to get up, but it may not matter. Kai still walked into it anyway. A nasty surprise awaits the Atlanta Rain when they come home to call. And Gator's gonna be able to drop onto the point now. The adaptive shielding keeping him alive. And Izzy Ark has gone over the edge, but lip, that EMP is gonna hurt. Master, not a thing he could do to get away from it. And now Iris is caught on the outside looking in. Supercharger thrown down. Void trying to hold the fort here with that kinetic grasp, and Bob making it hard for him. 
Philip has a cheeky little angle here to play from now. A dynamite right into the back line. Massa very low. He needs to jump inside the immortality field. And now Fate tries to get involved. Padre over there, but he rolls out of the immortality field. And is he arc? He has no one to keep alive. The Atlanta Raiders come alive in the last few moments. Like this rain over the Orissa. The Dragons want to say anything you can do. They, they beat the TP. Yeah, they oh, don't take it. Yeah. It's a fish bait. Gator gets worked down and Lip is already ticking along nicely. Hawk out of the picture from Void and the front line of the Atlanta Rain collapses in a screaming heap. Kai gonna Lick find Lip and it wasn't even him, it was his turret. Inanimate objects starting to get more damage done than the Atlanta Rain now as the Dragons move on in. They assume their right, spot. Right, right, played that sort of health yeah. It's not a hack though, there's no Sombra here. Oh, there it is, Kai needed that kill. Getting one back against Lip. Vindicated he is and now it's off to work. See how scared they are that they throw the immortality field up there before they even get that no chances on. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Into the hotel they go. Nice hold there, and Kai is just patient with this damage. Not looking for headshots. Just continue to work down some of these more durable targets. Great finish for Atlanta. This is absolutely the bare minimum if they want to win this map. Pelican trying to back away, but Hawk's going to be knocked up by the pile driver and Izayaki sitting pretty on the transcendence. He'll only really need it for a celebration at this point because the Dragons have got that fifth checkpoint. They have 30 seconds to work with him. And for the rain, it seems almost impossible to even touch. They're not going to get there. Get into what Atlanta rain would like them to do. What a charge. What a pin from fight. The shadow to follow up is going to be Pelican and Hawk knocked to the ground. Flutter <laughs> fight the pulse bump. And they're so close. A minute 15 left of the Absolute Atlanta ability. rain. There's nothing left to work with. The Dragons teach us that if we want to climb high, we must do it against the wind. The Shanghai Dragons are your 2021 Overwatch League champions. They just will never, in a match, Shanghai will never let you be in the better comp. They'll always feel like you're throwing on the comp you're on, unless you're mirroring them in the meta, like Sombra and Brig, and you're somehow better than them. You know, like I said, no one's better than them in that. So, like, you really can't mirror them in that matchup. So I don't know, like, we, like if both teams play perfectly, if both teams play like perfectly on our comp and their comp, I just think they win because like there's so many things that they can do to prevent us from like making proactive plays because like they have so many like be they have, like better ults like matchup to matchup they have better ults and they have like um, just more mobility like more panic buttons like to get out. So unless like their Sombra's just throwing, which Lip will not throw, like he's really he's really good. Um, I don't know, like Ilias, Ilias, like I said earlier, Ilias one of our worst maps, but um, we picked Hanna Bar next. We could have won that map if we uh, held second, but uh, we ended up messing up there. Um, Kings Row, we could have won that map, but we swapped a lot of heroes, and that's just, oh God, it's just <laughs> Havana, we could have won that map too. Like, the maps weren't entirely like one sided, but like, when you're in game, they really know how to choke you out and feel like you're not playing the right thing. And they definitely deserve to win. They were the better team. Just overall, the the team progression this year was just just a steady climb. Um, it just always was better and better and better and better and better. Uh, we had some weird stuff in the middle with not being able to travel and all this different stuff. Um, I just think we kind of came into our own. Um, we just gained confidence over the course of the season, gained confidence in each other. Um, and how we want to play. Everyone kind of understood people's, at the start it was people, everyone, everyone's in different regions of the world playing ranked all off season. Everybody comes in and you just have different ideas of how to play the game. And slowly people were able to impose their will on how they wanted the team to play. Um, and to just get people on the same page and um, just everyone kind of understand each other more and more and more. I think it was just a good steady climb throughout the season. Um, and I think that that little week break and then got back into practice, I think helped us a lot. Um, so yeah, I don't, it was just a really good season overall. And there was a lot of hard work and everybody just putting in good work and generally just giving their best effort. It was just a st slow, steady climb to the top, honestly. Um, to all the fans, thank you guys for sticking along with us, even through our um, rough spots this year. and some tragic things at last year <laughs> and um even before that i was here uh before i was on the team so uh thanks for sticking around uh, we appreciate the support and we hope you stick around for our rush too